The Revelation of Jesus Christ to His Servants Chapter 1 Revelation 1 verse 1 The Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. The Revelation of Jesus Christ This book is the revealing of Jesus Christ, not the concealing of Jesus Christ. It is written so Israel can recognize their Messiah when he returns. This title is also mentioned in 1 Peter 1 verse 13, and it refers to the time when Jesus returns to earth at the end of the tribulation period, when every eye shall see him. 1 Peter 1 verse 13 Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. To shew unto his servants, John is identified as one of his servants, so the servants mentioned here must also be servants like John. The servants are the Jewish believers during the time spoken about in this book, that both hear and keep the things written in it. Leviticus 25 verse 55, Isaiah 65 verse 9, and Revelation 7 verses 3 to 4 are places where Israel alone is identified as God's servants. Leviticus 25 verse 55, For unto me the children of Israel are servants, they are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Isaiah 65 verse 9, And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Revelation 7 verses 3 to 4, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Things which must shortly come to pass, most of the events in the book of the Revelation will happen during the seven-year tribulation period. Revelation 22 verse 6, And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. He sent and signified it by his angel. This same angel is mentioned in Revelation 22 verse 16, which uses the word show instead of signified to let you know the angel wanted the prophecy to be shown to God's servants. God gave the revelation of Jesus Christ to his son, to give it to his servant John, to shew unto his servants Israel, the things which must shortly come to pass, to help his servants to endure the seventieth week of Daniel that has been determined upon them by God, so that they may enter into the kingdom. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Revelation 1 verse 2, who bear record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. The word of God, John bear record of the word of God, in that it was sent to him by God's angel. 1 John 1 verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. The testimony of Jesus Christ, this refers to the spirit of prophecy mentioned in Revelation 19 verse 10. All things that he saw, the things of the future that he saw when he was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day. Revelation 1 verse 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Blessed is he that readeth, Blessed is used seven times in this book. Revelation 14 13, 16 15, 19 colon 9, 20 colon 6, 22 colon 7, and 22 14. The person who does all three things in this verse will be blessed by being allowed access into the kingdom. You, in the body of Christ today, cannot do these things as you are not Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. And they that hear the words of this prophecy, some in the tribulation period may not have access to a copy of the word of this prophecy but they get to hear it, and they keep what they have heard, they will be blessed with eternal life in the kingdom. And keep those things which are written therein, 
This is speaking to those who are the believing remnant during the tribulation period, not to you and I today. For the time is at hand, the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's, mentioned in Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Matthew 3 colon 2, 4 17, 10 colon 7, James 5 verse 8 and 1 Peter 4 verse 7. Revelation 1 verse 4 John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace, from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. To the seven churches which are in Asia, John is speaking to seven actual churches that will exist in the tribulation period in what was previously known as Asia Minor, or modern-day Turkey. They are not symbolic churches that represent seven church ages. There is not one verse of scriptural evidence to support such a teaching. The Bible teaches the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He can return at any moment. You cannot have the doctrine of Jesus' imminent return and also claim that Jesus has to wait to return until all seven church ages run their course. This theory was strongly and wrongly promoted by Clarence Larkin, an early dispensationalist, who did a lot of good with his dispensational charts, but some of them have some errors in them. Things at the beginning of the tribulation period will be just like they were in the first century when Jewish believers were persecuted and had to flee from their homeland to neighboring countries. Acts 8 verse 1, And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Grace be unto you, and peace, this is different from what Paul says in his epistles. Paul always says that grace and peace are from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. But John says that this grace and peace comes from Jesus three different times and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. From him which is, this is present tense in John's day, when Jesus gave these revelations to John. Jesus was alive and seated at the right hand of the Father till his enemies be made his footstool. Psalm 1, 10 verse 1, which was, this is past tense in that this speaks about Jesus' earthly ministry to the nation of Israel, and which is to come, this is future tense speaking about Jesus' return to set up his kingdom. Revelation 2 verses 5 and 16, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Revelation 3 verse 11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Revelation 22 colon 7, 12 to 20, Behold, I come quickly, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and mocketh a lie. I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely, I come quickly. Amen. Even so, Come, Lord Jesus. Contrast this verse with the beast in Revelation 17 verse 8. He is the Antichrist impersonating Christ in many ways. From the seven spirits which are before his throne, these are the seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Revelation 4 verse 5 And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. These are also the seven eyes of the Lord, which are sent forth into all the earth mentioned in Zechariah 3, 9, 4, 10, and Revelation 5, verse 6. Zechariah 3, verse 9, For behold the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Zechariah 4 verse 10, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Revelation 5 verse 6, And I beheld, and, lo, 
In the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Revelation 1 verse 5 And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The faithful witness, Jesus Christ was faithful in that he spoke only those things which he had heard from his Father. John 8 verses 14 and 29 Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came, and whither I go, but he cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Isaiah 49 verse 7 Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Jeremiah 42 verse 5 Then they said to Jeremiah, the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us, if we do not even according to all things for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. Revelation 3 verse 14 And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, the first begotten of the dead, Jesus was the first to die, and rise again from the dead, never to see death again. Colossians 1 verse 18 And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Psalm 2 verse 7, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. This happened at his resurrection. The prince of the kings of the earth, there is coming a day when he shall be king of kings, and lord of lords. Revelation 17 verse 14, These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is lord of lords, and king of kings, and they that are with him are called, and chosen, and faithful. Revelation 19 verse 16, And he hath on his vesture, and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, and Lord of lords. Unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, Jesus came to die, and to shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins. 1 John 1 verse 7, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Hebrews 9 verse 12 Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hebrews 13 verse 12 Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Revelation 7 verse 14 And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 1 verse 6, And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. And hath made us kings and priests. Thus that is spoken of that are to be made kings and priests, are the servants mentioned in the first verse of this letter. They are the Jewish believers enduring the time of Jacob's trouble, not believers in this present dispensation of grace. You are not a priest in the dispensation of grace. Exodus 19 verse 6, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. In 1 Peter 2 verses 5 to 9, Peter is writing to Jewish saints scattered throughout Pontus, Cappadocia, Asia, etc., not to us. Acts 2 verse 9 mentions that these same Jews were at Pentecost. 1 Peter 1 verse 1, 1 Peter 2 verses 5 to 9 ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Shown a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 1 verse 1 Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. 
Jesus will have glory and dominion forever, and he will reign on the earth with his servants, believing Israel, for a thousand years, while the church will be in heavenly places. Daniel 7 verse 14, And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages, should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. 1 Peter 5 verse 11, To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Revelation 1 verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. He cometh with clouds, this speaks of Jesus revealing to the world at his return when he comes in judgment. Daniel 7 verse 13, Zechariah 12 verse 10, and in Acts 1 verses 9 to 11, where two men in white apparel prophesy it as well. Daniel 7 verse 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Zechariah 12 verse 10, And I will pour upon the house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Acts 1 verses 9 to 11, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And every eye shall see him, this occurs at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation 19 verses 11 to 21, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written, that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. This is not the rapture of the church, which happened seven years earlier. The rapture is us going to meet Jesus in the clouds, and the only ones who will see him, will be those in the clouds. And they also, which pierced him, this is a reference to Israel. Psalm 22 verse 16, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Zechariah 12 verse 10, And I will pour upon the house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. All kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, Jesus will be coming as their judge, but notice that even though it is a dreadful time, John says, even so, amen. Revelation 1 verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Jesus is stating that he is the first and the last, and that he is the Almighty. Jesus is both fully man and fully God, the Godman. Isaiah 44 verse 6, Thus saith the Lord the King of Israel, and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Isaiah 48 verse 12, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am he, I am the first, 
I also am the last. Revelation 1 verse 17 And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Revelation 2 verse 8 And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. Revelation 22 verse 13 I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, which is, and which was, and which is to come. Jesus Christ has always been the Almighty. He was God at the time this was written by John. He was God while he walked this earth, and before his incarnation and he will be God when he returns. He has never ceased being God. The Almighty, another title for God. Genesis 17 verse 1, And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me, and be thou perfect. Revelation 21 verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Revelation 1 verse 9 1 John, Who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. 1 John, who also am your brother, he was their Jewish brother, and a fellow believer in Jesus. And companion in tribulation, John identified himself as a companion to the Jewish remnant that will be going through the tribulation period, where the gospel of the kingdom will once again be preached. Matthew 24 verse 14 And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Some believe he will prophesy again in the tribulation period the things mentioned by the seven thunders that he was told to seal up until that time. Daniel 9 verse 24 Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Daniel 12 verse 4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Revelation 10 verse 4, And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. The kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, Luke 8 verse 15, But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Luke 21 verse 19, In your patience, possess ye your souls. Hebrews 6 verse 13, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Hebrews 10 verse 36, For ye have need of patience, that, after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Hebrews 12 verse 1 Wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. James 1 verses 3 to 4 Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. James 5 verses 7 to 11 Be patient therefore. Brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and of tender mercy. Revelation 2 verses 2 to 3, 19 I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Revelation 3 verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelation 13 verse 10, He that letteth into captivity, shall go into captivity, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Revelation 14 verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, 
and the faith of Jesus. The patience of Jesus Christ is speaking about believers enduring unto the end of the tribulation period to enter their kingdom, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, nowhere does it say John was imprisoned on the island for his faith, he went there to receive the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus Christ, Revelation 1 verse 2 above. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19 verse 10, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 1 verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet. I was in the spirit, John was receiving supernatural revelations by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Ezekiel 37 verse 1, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Revelation 4 verse 2, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Revelation 17 verse 3, So he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Revelation 21 verse 10, And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. John had to be caught up to heaven in the Spirit, because his sinful body could not stand in the presence of God without being destroyed. The word Spirit is capitalized, thus denoting that it was by the Holy Spirit that he was seeing this vision. On the Lord's Day, this is the only time in the Bible the Lord's Day is ever mentioned, and it is a reference to the time period known as the Day of the Lord used 27 times in the Old Testament. Isaiah 2 verse 12, For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. This day is both a literal 24-hour day at the end of the tribulation period, and the time period of seven years when God is judging the earth. John sees things that will happen thousands of years ahead of his time and retells what has already seen. At other times, he tells what will happen, as though it was a live event happening right before his eyes. A great voice, as of a trumpet, Exodus 19 verses 16 and 19, And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Hebrews 12 verse 19, And the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of, words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. Revelation 4 verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Revelation 1 verse 11 saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and, what thou sayest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, Alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet and Omega is the last one. What thou sayest, write in a book. John saw the events of chapters 4 through 22 unfold before him in a vision, and he wrote what he saw, which makes up most of the book of the Revelation. The Greek word for book is Biblion, which means literally, a scroll. It is where we get the word Bible from. He did not see what was written in Revelation chapters 2 and 3 happen. He was just told to write to the angels of these seven different churches in Asia telling them that God had seen what they were doing. Send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Why are these churches in Asia, modern-day Turkey? Believers will once again be scattered there from Israel, just as they were in John's day. These will be new churches, as all true believers will have gone up in the rapture. They will be started by Jews that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, at the beginning of the tribulation period. They will be Jewish kingdom churches. The doctrine in chapters 2 and 3 agree with Israel's kingdom church, not with the doctrine of the churches that were started by Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. These letters are cyclical letters, which are to be read, and obeyed by all the other churches, during the tribulation period. Revelation 1 verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. The voice that spake with me, the great voice from verse 10. Seven golden candlesticks, 
These are the seven churches first mentioned in verse 11. The candlesticks were not speaking. Christ was speaking in their midst. Revelation 1 verse 20 below. Revelation 1 verse 13, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. One like unto the Son of Man, John saw him as a lamb during his earthly ministry, and now he was seeing him in his heavenly role. The Son of Man is a title meaning a son of Adam, but this verse says John saw one like unto the Son of Man. Jesus was a descendant of Adam, and the Son of God. Daniel 7 verse 13 I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, clothed with a garment down to the foot, which was white as snow, according to Daniel 7 verse 9. Gird about the paps with a golden girdle, the breast area. Luke 11 verse 27 And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice, and said unto him, Blessed is the wound that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. Revelation 1 verse 14 His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. This is also used to describe the Ancient of Days. Daniel 7 verse 9 I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. The thrones being cast down are the fallen angels, being cast down to the earth at the midpoint of the tribulation period. Luke 10 verses 17 to 19, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Revelation 2 verse 18 And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Revelation 19 verse 12 His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written, that no man knew, but he himself. The Son of God appeared as the angel of the Lord in a flame of fire. Exodus 3 verse 2, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Acts 7 verse 30, And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Hebrews 1 verse 7, And of the angels he saith, who mocketh his angel's spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Revelation 1 verse 15, And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. His feet like unto fine brass, brass is symbolic of judgment. Revelation 2 verse 18, His voice as the sound of many waters. Psalm 29 verse 3, Ezekiel 43 verse 2, Revelation 14 verse 2 and 19 colon 6. Revelation 1 verse 16, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. In his right hand, the hand that a person bestows honor with. Genesis 48 verses 13 to 18. Seven stars, they are the angels, messengers, over the seven churches. Revelation 1 verse 20. A sharp two-edged sword, the word of God. Hebrews 4 verse 12. His countenance was as the sun shineth, this can be seen in the story on the Mount of Transfiguration in Luke 9 verse 29. Revelation 1 verse 17 And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Matthew 28 verse 4 And for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men. John 18 verses 5 to 6 They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward, and fell to the ground. I am the first and the last. John is then comforted by Christ as he tells him not to fear, because the one he ministered with for three and a half years is the first and the last, a title reserved only for God himself. Isaiah 44 verse 6, Thus saith the Lord the King of Israel, and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last and beside me, there is no God. Revelation 1 verse 18 I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. I am he that liveth, present tense, and was dead. Jesus was dead physically three days, beginning at his crucifixion, 
but he was alive in the heart of the earth, paradise. Mark 15 verses 37 to 47, And Jesus cried with a loud voice, and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain, from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out, and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Less, and of Hoses, and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him, and ministered unto him Winky Face and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came, and went in boldly unto Pilate, and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen, and took him down, and wrapped him in the linen, and laid him in a sepulchre, which was hewn out of a rock, and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre. And Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Hoses, beheld where he was laid. Luke 23 verse 43, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And behold, I am alive for evermore, which began at his resurrection. Mark 16 verses 1 to 9, And when the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Salome, had bought sweet spices, that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen, he is not here, behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed, neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Revelation 2 verse 8 And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things set the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. The keys of hell and of death, both death and hell, will be cast into the lake of fire at the last day. Hell is the abode of the dead. David's soul went to hell, the abode of the dead, but he was in the paradise side, also known as Abraham's bosom, not in the torment side, while he was awaiting the resurrection. Revelation 20 verses 13 to 14, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Psalm 16 verse 10, For thou wilt not lead my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. There is a key to this pit mentioned in Revelation 9 verse 1, and 20 colon 1 which is in the heart of the earth as well. Revelation 1 verse 19 Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The things which thou hast seen, these are the events happening during the seven-year tribulation period. Revelation 4 verse 4 John writes absolutely nothing about anything prior to his vision because they are recorded already in his other epistles. So this comment refers to events that he has seen already in his vision during the seven years. The things which are, the things that are occurring on the day of the Lord when he returns, the last day of the last days, aka, the day of the Lord, the things which shall be hereafter, the things that shall be happening during the millennial kingdom and beyond. Revelation 4 verse 1. That means that John was taken to a point in time in the future, and then he is allowed to see things that had already happened, and things that were happening on that day, and things that would happen after that day. Revelation 1 verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The seven stars, the angels of the seven churches. The angels are the messengers of these churches. In my right hand, this is a position of honor for faithful service. The seven sealed book is mentioned as being in God's right hand in Revelation 5 verse 1 and 7. The seven golden candlesticks, these are the seven churches in verse 20. Again, the seven churches do not represent seven church ages, 
they are literal churches. Chapter 2 The seven churches, these seven letters, are written to the angels of the seven churches. The term angel in the Bible means a messenger. During the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period, angels will once again begin to deliver messages to believing Jews to help them in their time of great need. This is not happening today in the dispensation of grace. Revelation 2 verse 1 Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The angel of the church of Ephesus, John writes to the angel, messenger of this future church in Ephesus. Ephesus is the closest city to the island of Patmos of all seven of these churches. This is not the same group that Paul writes to in Ephesians much later. John writes to future kingdom saints, while Paul writes to the body of Christ. The word angel is transliterated from the Greek word agalos, a messenger. It is not written to the pastor of the church, as this angel is also identified as the first angel in Revelation 8 verse 7 that sounds his trumpet, and that later pours out a golden vial of the wrath of God in Revelation 15 verses 6 to 8. The Greek never supports the word angel being translated as a pastor. He that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, Jesus Christ holds these seven angels in his right hand. This is a position of honor and blessing. Genesis 48 verses 13 to 18, And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly. For Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph, and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God, which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand, to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn, put thy right hand upon his head. Jesus Christ is the right hand of God, and he holds these messengers to these tribulation churches in his right hand. Revelation 1 verse 20 Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, Jesus literally walks in the midst of the seven candlesticks in heaven which represents seven literal churches in Asia. Revelation 1 verse 20. He says this to let the recipients of this letter know that he will be there for them in this terrible time. Revelation 2 verse 2. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Thy works, the deeds they are doing, thy labor, their labor has to do with their struggles that they are enduring. Thy patience, this has to do with their patiently enduring unto the end. Matthew 24 verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Revelation 1 verse 9 1 John, Who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 2 verse 19, I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Revelation 3 verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelation 13 verse 10, He that letteth into captivity, shall go into captivity, he that killeth with the sword, must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience, and the faith of the saints. Revelation 14 verse 12, KJV, Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Thou canst not bear them which are evil, they don't put up with false teachers that come their way. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. An apostle means a sent one. They will be able to test who is a true apostle in that day, by seeing if they can do what Jesus sent his apostles to do 2,000 years ago. If they will not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, then they are not apostles. A real apostle in those days will go and preach the gospel of the kingdom in all the world. They will heal all manner of sickness, and disease among the people, just as Jesus sent the apostles to do. Matthew 24 verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you alway, 
even unto the end of the world. Amen. Matthew 4 verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Revelation 2 verse 3, And hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted, hast borne, carried. Matthew 20 verse 12, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. John 20 verse 15, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him, hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Hast patience. Revelation 1 verse 9 1 John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 3 verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelation 13 verse 10, He that letteth into captivity, shall go into captivity, he that killeth with the sword, must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience, and the faith of the saints. Revelation 14 verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus, hast labored, the struggles they have endured, hast not fainted, they were enduring unto the end. Revelation 2 verse 4, Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. This is synonymous with the first commandment. Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Mark 12 verse 30, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. Revelation 2 verse 5, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. This implies that their repentance should be quick as well. I will come unto thee quickly. This is said only six times in scripture, and each time it is to the seven churches in the book of the Revelation. 2 16, 3 11, 22 colon 7, 12 and 20. And will remove thy candlestick from out of his place, the candlestick represents the church of Ephesus that will be removed out of his place, in the midst of the throne of God, if it doesn't repent and do the first work. God is saying to these tribulation churches, You are in my midst at the present time, but I will remove you out of your place in my midst if you don't repent of leaving me. If that happens, they will not enter into their kingdom. Revelation 2 verse 6, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. The deeds of the Nicolaitans, this is the elevation of the clergy over the laity. The word Nico means to rule, while the word laetain means the laity. Revelation 2 verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This statement is made to each of the seven churches. Jesus also said it about John the Baptist in Matthew 11 verse 15 and twice in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. It is also used of Jesus about what defiles a man in Mark 7 verse 16, and in Luke 14 verses 33 to 35, concerning people forsaking all to be his disciples. To him that overcometh, this phrase is only used of the apostle John in the scripture. The overcomers are the ones which endure unto the end of the tribulation. Matthew 24 verse 13. An overcomer is someone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God in those days. 1 John 5 verses 4-5 1 John 5 verses 1-5 Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God, and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Revelation 21 verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The tree of life, this tree gives the overcomers eternal life in the kingdom when they partake of it. Those who believe during the tribulation period will not be sealed by the Holy Spirit as we are today in the dispensation of grace. So, 
they will need to partake of this tree. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. In Luke 23 verse 43 Jesus tells a thief on the cross that he will join him in paradise on that same day, which was in the heart of the earth, aka Abraham's bosom. Later, Paul speaks about John's being caught up into paradise in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 4. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 4, how that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter, which places paradise in heaven, sometime after the resurrection. Ephesians 4 verses 8 to 10, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. The church in Smyrna, Revelation 2 verse 8, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. The angel of the church in Smyrna, this letter is not written to the pastor of the church. This angel is also called the second angel in Revelation 8 verse 8 that sounds his trumpet, and that later pours out a golden vial of the wrath of God in Revelation 15 verses 6 to 8. The first and the last, this is a title for God used in Isaiah 44 colon 6, 48 colon 12, Revelation 1 verses 8 and 17 and 22 13, which was dead and is alive. This is a description of the man Christ Jesus, who died in front of John on the cross, and is alive today because he rose from the dead. This verse connects the first, and the last, with the one who was dead, but now is alive. They are the same. Jesus is God in the flesh. Revelation 2 verse 9, I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, thy works, the deeds they are doing. Tribulation, the word comes from the same Greek root word for trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is called the Great Tribulation. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 and Revelation 2 verse 22 and 7 14. Poverty, they were poor in man's eyes, but rich in God's. The blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, who is a Jew in God's eyes? A Jew is first a descendant of Abraham, and then they must also be circumcised in their heart. That means that only believing Israel are real Jews in the tribulation period. The unbelieving Jews, who are physical descendants of Abraham, but not spiritual descendants during the tribulation period, are the ones committing this blasphemy. The synagogue of Satan, these Jews go to worship at a synagogue, which God calls the synagogue of Satan because those that are in it reject Jesus Christ whom Moses spoke of. They can be a descendant of Abraham, and still not be a Jew in God's eyes, if they do not believe in God the Father, and his Son. 1 John 5 verses 11 to 12, And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Revelation 2 verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, that ye may be tried. The tribulation period is referred to as a fiery furnace used to refine his servants. Daniel 3 verses 1 to 30, Isaiah 48 verse 10, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Revelation 3 verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. Ye shall have tribulation ten days, they will have ten days to change their mind and take the mark of the beast, or else they will be beheaded for their faith as enemies of the one world government. Daniel 1 verses 12 to 14, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat, and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou sayest, deal with thy servants. So, he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, endure unto the end. Matthew 24 verse 13, a crown of life, eternal life in the kingdom. James 1 verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Revelation 2 verse 11, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 
This statement is made to each of the seven churches. Jesus also said it about John the Baptist in Matthew 11 verse 15 and twice in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. It is also used of Jesus about what defiles a man in Mark 7 verse 16 and in Luke 14 verses 33 to 35 concerning people forsaking all to be his disciples. He that overcometh, this phrase is used in each of the seven letters to the seven churches in Asia. An overcomer is defined for us in 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5 as someone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Revelation 21 verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The second death, Revelation 20 verse 6 and 21 colon 8. Revelation 20 verse 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The church in Pergamos Revelation 2 verses 12 to 13 and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. The angel of the church in Pergamos, this angel is identified as the third angel in Revelation 8 verse 10 that sounds his trumpet, that later pours out a golden vial of the wrath of God in Revelation 15 verses 6 to 8. The sharp sword with two edges, this is the word of God, thy works, the deeds they are doing. Antipas was my faithful martyr, Antipas is a future martyr in the tribulation period. Antipas was actually a popular name in those days. Agrippa's uncle was Herod, whose full name was Herod Antipas. Satan's seat. This seat is where Satan will dwell during the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Satan himself will have his seat of authority in actual Pergamos, but his eyes are on the prize of Jerusalem where the Antichrist will be. Revelation 2 verse 14, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. The doctrine of Balaam, doctrine has to do with teaching. Just as Balaam taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before Israel, so will some in Pergamos be doing to these tribulation saints. Numbers 22 to 24 and 31 colon 16. To eat things sacrificed unto idols, while everything is to be accepted today in the dispensation of grace if it is received by thanksgiving, it was not so in Israel's program in the past, nor will it be okay in the tribulation period. 1 Timothy 4 verses 3-4, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. To commit fornication, the word fornication comes from the Greek word porneo. This could be referring to spiritual adultery, idol worship. Revelation 2 verse 15, So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans, this is a separation in the classes of believers. They have religious leaders who hold the laity in bondage, dependent upon them for their distorted versions of salvation. Revelation 2 verse 16, Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Thee, the thee is the church as a whole. God spares the wheat, believers in Pergamos, them, the them are the ones that Christ will actually fight against with the sword of his mouth, who he burns up the chaff, the unbelievers, with unquenchable fire. The sword of my mouth, the word of God, which is a two-edged sword. Revelation 1:16, 1915, and 19:21. Revelation 2 verse 17, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This statement is made to each of the seven churches. Jesus also said it about John the Baptist in Matthew 11 verse 15 and twice in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. It is also used of Jesus about what defiles a man in Mark 7 verse 16, and in Luke 14 verses 33 to 35, concerning people forsaking all to be his disciples. To him that overcometh, an overcomer is described in 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5, as someone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God in those last days. Revelation 21 verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. The hidden manna, this is Christ himself, 
who for the time being is in exile in heaven, hidden from view. He will supernaturally provide bread in the wilderness for three and a half years during the latter half of the tribulation period to the remnant. He is the manna that came down from heaven. John 6 verse 35. A white stone, this is Jesus as well. For he was the stone that was rejected and set at naught by the builders, and has become the chief of the corner. A new name, a new name of God, is written in the stone, and not on the stone. Isaiah 62 verse 2 and Revelation 3 verse 12. The church in Thyatira, Revelation 2 verse 18, and unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. The angel of the church in Thyatira, this is not the pastor of the church. This is the fourth angel mentioned in Revelation 8 verse 12 that blows the fourth trumpet. And he is also one of the seven angels that pour out the wrath of God in Revelation 15 verses 6 to 8. Pastors do not have these abilities. His eyes like unto a flame of fire. Exodus 3 verse 2. Acts 7 verse 30. Hebrews 1 verse 7. Revelation 1 verse 14 and 19 12. His feet are like fine brass. Revelation 1 verse 15. Revelation 2 verse 19 I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Thy works, the deeds they are doing. Charity, this is from the root word agape in the Greek, a deep abiding love, translated as love numerous times. John 21 verses 15 to 17. Service, their ministry. It is from the same word that we get the word deacon from. 1 Timothy 3 verses 10 and 13 And let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. For they that have used the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good degree, and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Faith, what they believe. Thy patience. Revelation 1, 9, 2, 2 3, 3 10, 13 10, and 14 12. Thy works, and the last to be more than the first. The new works that they were doing later on were more than the works that they were doing in the beginning. Revelation 2 verse 20 Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. That woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, notice that she does the same thing as Balaam did in Pergamos, in causing Israel to sin. She also is a self-proclaimed prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants. Whoever Jezebel is, the church there should not allow her to teach God's servants. What she is teaching is seducing them away from what is required of them in that day and time. At that time, the middle wall of partition will be back up between Israel and the Gentiles, and Israel will not be allowed to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Ephesians 2 verse 14. They will not be under the dispensation of grace then, but under the law of Moses. My servants, these are the believing Jews identified in Revelation 1 verse 1. To commit fornication, the word fornication comes from the Greek word porneo. To eat things sacrificed unto idols, everything is to be accepted today in the dispensation of grace if it is received by thanksgiving. That was not so in Israel's program, nor will it be okay in the tribulation period. 1 Timothy 4 verses 3 to 4. Revelation 2 verses 21 to 22. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. I gave her space to repent of her fornication. God will send 144,000 missionaries out into the world to warn this false church and its inhabitants, of the spiritual adultery she is committing against God, but she will not repent. I will cast her into a bed, those that remain inside this after they are warned for a space of time to repent and do not, they will go into the great tribulation period which happens in the second half of the that period. Ezekiel 32 verse 25. Them that commit adultery with her, this is not speaking of a literal woman in bed with a bunch of men, but a religious system, like ball worship disguised in a global church that entices his servants to commit spiritual adultery. Great tribulation, those that come out of this harlot church will be protected in the wilderness for three and one half years. God will send the lost strong delusion and they will believe a lie, but those that have heard the truth will need to purge these false believers out of their tribulation churches. Matthew 24 verse 21 and 7 14. Revelation 2 verse 23, And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. I will kill her children with death. They are the little harlots spoken of in Revelation 18 called, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, 
that have broken from the mother church. They infiltrate this church as Jezebel did, but God here warns them to watch out for this during their short seven-year existence. Revelation 6 verse 8 I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Rewards and punishments are meted out based on a person's work, of what sort it is. This is not dealing with salvation, but rewards. Revelation 2 verses 24 to 25 But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. The depths of Satan, those who have been deceived by Satan's prophetess, Jezebel, have sunk as low as is humanly possible. Those who have not taken Satan's mark yet are encouraged to hold fast until Christ comes back at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. Hold fast till I come, endure unto the end. Matthew 24 verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Hebrews 3 verse 6, But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we? if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Hebrews 4 verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Hebrews 10 verse 23, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised winky face. Revelation 3 verses 3 and 11, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Revelation 2 verse 26, And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He that overcometh, this phrase is used in each of the seven letters to the seven churches in Asia. An overcomer is defined for us in 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5 as someone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Revelation 21 verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son, and keepeth my works unto the end. This is the key issue concerning works in the tribulation period. They need to be his works not just being busy in a religious exercise that makes you feel good in the flesh. They need to work the works of Christ, not religion. To him will I give power over the nations. Those believers in the tribulation period who keep Christ's works unto the end of that time will rule the nations with Christ, with a rod of iron. Revelation 2 verse 27, And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my Father. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. The them are the Gentile nations that will be ruled over by the believing children of Israel during the kingdom. The man-child in Revelation 12 verse 5 is said to rule with a rod of iron in the kingdom as well. Revelation 2 verse 28, And I will give him the morning star. The morning star, this is Jesus Christ, who is the Son of Righteousness. Those who keep his works unto the end of the tribulation period get to rule with Jesus with a rod of iron. Numbers 2400 hour 17 I shall see him, but not now, I shall behold him, but not nigh, there shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheph. 2 Peter 1 verse 19 We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Revelation 22 verse 16, I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. Revelation 2 verse 29, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This statement is made to each of the seven churches. Jesus also said it about John the Baptist in Matthew 11 verse 15 and twice in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. It is also used of Jesus about what defiles a man in Mark 7 verse 16, and in Luke 14 verses 33 to 35, concerning people forsaking all to be his disciples.